Okay guys, this is the third uh, support text that we're using to help support us through our space booklet and our space unit in science. This is a bit different than the other two that we have read. The other two are Solar System and A Visit to Kitt Peak. We're nonfiction. This, Coyote and the Star, is a fictional book. It is a Klamath Native American folktale. So it's a native legend uh, discussing coyote and the star. So this is a little bit different than what we've read before. So a lot of the text structures that we've seen here will be completely different than the other ones. Okay, we're not going to see a glossary, a table of context, an index. Uh, in a non-fiction, in a fictional story, pardon me, uh, we we just literally often will just have beautiful pictures, either photographs or illustrations that we have here, and the text, the print that goes along with it, okay? Now there are some books that are a combination of both, but this story is just the pictures and the words. Okay, Coyote and the Star. In the time before time, animals lived interesting lives. There were no humans, and the animals were free to do as they pleased. Everything was perfect. There was no disease, no hunger, no war, and no suffering. The animals had everything they needed. Hmm. Inferring from that first paragraph, it sounds like everything was wonderful before humans came, and then we came and messed it all up. Just an inference. All right. Well, almost everything. Coyote enjoyed the nighttime. He would sit on a rock outside his house all night and watch the stars. Every night, as he sat watching, he gazed at one particular star that was very beautiful. This large star was more beautiful than all the other stars. She was more beautiful than even the planets. She was more beautiful than even the sun and the moon. And Caillou thought they were very lovely, especially the moon. So Caillou's looking at this one beautiful, beautiful star. And he thinks it's more beautiful than the sun and the moon. And he thinks everything out there in the universe is beautiful. Coyote was in love with the star and talked with her night after night. So you can see he's chatting with the star. But she would not respond to him. She floated across the sky and pretended not to notice him. Now, I lived on a farm growing up and I'm sure lots of you guys do too. And even if you don't live on the farms, often at nighttime we can hear the coyotes howling or barking up at the sky, at the night sky. So it sounds like that's what Coyote is doing right here. Now Coyote was known among the other animals as the song dog. Even though his voice was rather scratchy, he loved to howl and sing his songs. He especially loved to sing when the moon was bright. So Coyote thought that if he could sing a beautiful song, the star would notice him. He thought and wrote. After three days, he had composed a new song. He was convinced this was the most beautiful song he could sing. So he's trying his best to make the most beautiful song that he can. Sounds like Coyote sings a little bit like I do. Lots of screeching, not on tune. That's okay, makes me feel good. So there we see Coyote. And he is howling at the star. That night, Coyote went outside when the sky became dark. His stomach felt a little nervous, and his heart was beating faster than usual. He sat on his rock and waited for the star to rise above the horizon. When she did, he began to sing. Oh, beautiful star, I'm waiting for you. My heart is open and my love is true. I ask for your hand and your heart to woo. 
please give me a sign that I am not a fool. And he sang his verse again and again, hoping she would notice. But she just flew across the sky and did not utter a word. The other animals watched Coyote sing and felt sorry for him. No star had ever loved an animal. So you can see all these other animals, how they, they care about Coyote and his feelings. And they feel terrible for him that he loves this star so much and it's unrequited. She does not return his love. No star had ever loved an animal. They knew Coyote had often been a fool, especially in matters of love. Coyote's older brother, Wolf, just shook his head and sighed. Wolf had helped Coyote out many difficult spots. He had a feeling that his silly younger brother would get himself in trouble again. Coyote did foolish things for love. This looks interesting though. What is this? Hmm. For seven nights, Coyote sang his song and received no response. After the seventh night, he stopped singing. He was exhausted. He closed his eyes and dreamed of a ladder that elevated him to the stars. He climbed the ladder and took his star by the hand. They danced and danced, happy to finally be together. So this is in Coyote's dream. He's dreaming this. It is not reality. It is just in his dream. When he awoke, he noticed that in the distance, the star passed very close. So here we can see it here and it seems very close. It passed very close to a mountain. He thought if he could climb to the top of the mountain, he could touch the star and convince her to love him. Coyote ran very fast, bumping into trees and tripping over rocks. Owl watched him run through a thicket of blackberries without even noticing. Gopher stuck his head out of his hole just as Coyote stumbled over a fallen tree and tumbled down a hill. But Coyote was resilient. He was determined to meet the beautiful star. So here we see Coyote, as all the other animals say, being quite foolish for love. Okay? Oh dear. Here we see him up in a tree. Here we see him tumbling into a lake. The mountain was almost in sight. When Coyote came to a deep river, the water was cold and the current was very swift. Coyote didn't like water. He had almost drowned many times in his adventures and his long hair always got matted when it got wet. He was getting frustrated when he noticed a tree branch that hung over the river. So he climbed the tree and tiptoed out onto the branch. There he is, he's trying to cross the river using the tree branch. Doesn't look like he's very successful. Just as he reached the end and thought he could jump to the other shore, the branch broke. Splash! It was a long fall, but the water cushioned his impact. He shook the water from his fur, grumbled about looking like a wet cat and continued on his way. So even the water is not deterring him from trying to get to this star. Okay, so it looks like he's successful and gets to the top of the mountain peak. Let's see what happens. He kept running until he finally stood on the mountain. A whole day had passed and the sun was just now setting. He waited for night. The sun, or pardon me, soon the star appeared on the horizon. She was brilliant and even more beautiful than Coyote had, had remembered. He could now see that all the stars were dancing. She and the other stars moved through the night sky, dancing elegant steps. Coyote didn't know how to dance very well, but he sure wanted to dance with her. So he waited patiently. He was filled with butterflies and his heart was beating like a big drum, but he stayed quiet. 
the star danced closer and closer until finally she was on the mountain. Coyote reached as high as he could, but he couldn't touch her. He jumped and tried again, but still could not jump high enough. He begged her to reach his hand to his, and she did. She took his paw into her hand and pulled him up to her. Slowly, she danced with Coyote up into the night sky. They went far, very high above the earth. Coyote began to get dizzy and afraid. He did not think he was afraid of heights, but this was very high. His heart pounded even harder. Coyote and the star danced farther and farther above the earth. Among the other stars, it was icy cold and there wasn't a single sound. None of the other stars said anything. He begged the beautiful star to talk to him, but she was silent. Coyote looked down and saw the rivers as thin lines, the mountains as small spots. His heart became very cold. He begged the star to return him to earth. He missed the rock outside his house. He missed the ground. When they had reached the top of the sky, the star let go of Coyote. For the time of one whole moon, 28 days, Coyote fell to the earth. He fell and fell and thought about his life the whole time. He promised himself he would never act foolish again. He vowed to be a good coyote from that day on, but he knew he had committed foolish acts and he felt powerful regret. Finally, he hit the ground. The impact made a great hole where once there had been a very large mountain, the mountain he had climbed. His blood turned to water and filled the hole to become a beautiful lake. It is the deepest, bluest lake on the continent of North America. Now, when coyotes howl at the stars, they are scolding the stars that killed the first coyote. They remember him and his great love in their songs. So this is the story of Coyote and his foolish love and how he ended up, his foolish love led him to becoming the deepest lake in North America. See if you can figure out what the deepest lake is, where it's found, and tell me a little bit about what, who, which group of um, indigenous people wrote this story. All right, guys, take care.